Good afternoon, and thank you for joining me today. Today is September 5th, and my sermon today is called God's Complete Knowledge and Care. Now, we're going to look at Psalm 139, verses 23 and 24, and then we'll have a prayer. So Psalm 139, verses 23 and 24 in the Good News Bible, of which I'll use throughout today, uh, reads as follows. Examine me, O God, and know my mind. Test me and discover my thoughts. Find out if there is any evil in me and guide me in the everlasting way. Thank you, Lord, for your word. And as I said, I will be using the Good News Bible throughout. Let's pray. Your word, Lord, brings us peace and hope. In your word, we find the comfort and strength required to guide us through our lives, bringing us to a place of wanting to be more like you. Teach us, Lord, to stay under your direction, and may our lives be ever pleasing to you. Amen. Just those two lines, examine me, O God, and know my mind, test me and discover my thoughts, find out if there is any evil in me and guide me in the everlasting way, is a powerful prayer to pray on Sunday or any day, but certainly on a Sunday as we begin a new week with the Lord. The week that we have just finished is now behind us. So now, as we look forward to a new week, we ask God to examine us, to look at our minds, our thoughts, and our actions. God knows every detail of our lives. Imagine that for a moment, and you will realize how truly amazing God is. This great and mighty God who knew us in our mother's womb, as we are told in verse 15 of this psalm, cares so much about us that he wants every day to be part of our lives. He is a good, good father. No matter where we go, he is with us. As we look at verse 7 of Psalm 139 in part, it says, Where could I go to get away from your presence? There is nowhere, there is nowhere we can be that God is not with us. So that is good news for sure. Psalm 139 is entitled, God's Complete Knowledge and Care which was the title I used for the message. So let's go to that psalm as you open your Bibles and let's read it through from beginning to end. And you follow in your version if you're not using the good news and it will read similar. Lord, you have examined me and know me. You know everything I do. Far from away you understand all my thoughts. You see me, whether I am working or resting. You know all my actions. Even before I speak, you already know what I will say. You are all around me on every side. You protect me with your power. Your knowledge of me is too deep. It is beyond my understanding. Where can I go to escape from you? Where can I get away from your presence? If I went up to heaven, you would be there. If I lay down in the world of the dead, 
you would be there. If I flew away beyond the east or lived in the farthest place in the west, you would be there to lead me. You would be there to help me. I could ask the darkness to hide me or the light around me to turn into night, but even darkness is not dark for you. And the night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light are the same to you. You created every part of me. You put me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because you are to be feared. All you do is strange and wonderful. I know it with all my heart. When my bones were being formed, carefully put together in my mother's womb, when I was growing there in secret, you knew that I was there. You saw me before I was born. The days allotted to me had all been recorded in your book before any of them ever began. Oh God, how difficult I find your thoughts. How many of them there are. If I counted them, they, they, they would be more than the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. Oh God, how I wish you would have killed the wicked. How I wish violent men would leave me alone. They say wicked things about you. They speak evil things against your name. Oh, Lord, how I hate those who hate you. How I despise those who rebel against you. I hate them with a total hatred. I regard them as my enemies. Examine me, O oh God, and know my mind. Test me and discover my thoughts. Find out if there is any evil in me and guide me in the everlasting way. That is quite a powerful psalm to read through. David the psalmist presents a mighty prayer here. <clears throat> there is peace in this psalm. So much so that we are grateful to God for how he made and kept safe how he made who we are. He made us and kept us safe in his care. Nowhere can we go that he does not see us. Even when evil surrounds us, we do not fear because we know God alone can bring us to a place of peace. Our hearts are troubled by the wicked ways of the world that we see today just as David did in his day. He hated the people who spoke against his heavenly father because he loved the Lord so profoundly. We do not like it when people today speak against our Lord. When we love someone, we do not like it when others speak evil against them and or cause any harm to come upon them. When we ask God to examine us, we want him to reveal to us any way in which we and those we share our lives with are not pleasing to him. When God fills our heart with his love, grace, and mercy, we should be able to extend that to others. Family, friends, and strangers are to, be re are to be treated with respect. In all the days of our lives, which are recorded in your book, Lord, may we daily examine our hearts and minds, asking you to remove any evil in us. As you guide us in your ways, may we learn to take instruction, improving our daily walk in you. The reading 
on Wednesday of this week just passed was entitled, Create in Me. And it was from Psalm 51, verse 10. And it's similar to what we're discussing today. We are asking God to keep us pure. Only God can guide us through his word to examine ourselves and to change what is not pleasing to him. So, Psalm 51 and 139 have us in his tender care. His knowledge is granted unto us as we spend time in his word. He enlightens us when we understand his messages to us. Our thoughts are given his clarity and our heaviness is lifted when we come into his presence. Oh, how blessed we truly are. The word of God is full of knowledge, wisdom, guidance, and care. His love for us is shown to us throughout the complete word of God. How much better will our lives be when we take time to spend with him. I am very thankful to have his word to turn to in all the goings on in my life. Every emotion, circumstance, situation, problem, and query are addressed in the Bible. This one book that gives me instruction on a daily basis is the one book I cannot live without. How about you? Search the word for God's complete knowledge and care. Now let us thank the Lord for his word. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your word. Because years ago, you saw fit that this very book should be written and that all of us should be using it to guide our lives. The answers you provide are always the answers we need. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen. Now today is Communion Sunday. And so, as you take a moment or two to prepare your um, your juice and your cracker, perhaps maybe I will just run over a few things that will happen further in the week, and that will give you time to uh, prepare your emblems for communion, and we'll join together in that. As we go into the furtherance of this week, Monday, Spencer will have something to think about, and Tuesday he will have the Bible study in Galatians, which he's moving right along in, and I hope you're enjoying spending time with him in that. Wednesday, we'll have Peter's Picks, and on Thursday, we'll have, um, we will have, uh, I have to stop and think. We may have Mike's writing. Uh, it's usually the second week of the month, but this is a longer month, so I'm not sure if it'll be this Thursday or if it'll be the following, but uh, you may want to watch for that as well. And then on Friday, we will have um, the message from Pastor Todd. And of course, I'll be back next Sunday with the writing. On Wednesday, I'll also have a, a reading that I will do. Um, so we'll have that. Now, I think I may have messed that up. Wednesday's the reading. Thursday is Peter's Picks, along with perhaps Mike's writing. And if it isn't this week, it'll be the following. So watch for that. And then Friday will be uh, Pastor Todd's message. So I trust that you've had a good week and that you've seen the hand of the Lord all around you because we are absolutely in such beauty around us at this point. And uh, as I look all over the world, I see the devastation that's happening. As I watch some of the news with New York, my heart just breaks because so many have died in that horrific rainstorm. 
uh, the water came upon them very quickly and had, they had little time to, to get out of the way of the water. Water is powerful, powerful force. So please continue to pray for them and for areas where we have fires all over the world. Please continue to hold up the workers who are trying desperately to put the fires out and for each person who is suffering any kind of loss. In, in their lives, any kind of disruption, please keep them in prayer. God will hear our prayers and he will answer. So as we come now to the time of communion, I would ask that uh, you would just sit quietly now and join in. So as we gather to share in communion, the bread and the wine represent the body and the blood of Jesus who willingly gave up his life that we might have life eternal. We take communion in remembrance of Jesus and remember that we are united with Christ because of his sacrifice and that we have accepted him as Lord and Savior and one day we will be eternally his. Let us take a moment now to call to mind our sins, asking forgiveness, and giving forgiveness to those who have sinned against us. I pray that you will ask God to examine your heart and to create in you a new heart, a clean heart. In Matthew chapter 26, verses 26 and 28, we read, While they were eating, Jesus took a piece of bread. He gave a prayer of thanks. Thank you, Lord. He broke it. And he gave it to his disciples. Take and eat it, he said. This is my body. Then he took the cup. He gave thanks to God. Thank you, Lord. And he gave it to them. Drink it, all of you, he said. This is my blood, which seals God's covenant. My blood poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Lord, thank you for reminding us as we partake in communion that we are united as a body of Christ. And we call to our remembrance the sacrifice that Jesus made for each one of us. Your son, loving and forgiving others in the manner he taught us is such an extraordinary example for our lives. And thank you for reminding us that every time we eat this bread and drink from this cup, partaking in communion, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes, as we are told in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 26. Jesus is our Lord and Savior, and we give thanks with a grateful heart. Now, as we come to the end of our service today, I'd like to just end with a little chorus, and perhaps you know it, and we'll sing it along with me. We'll sing it a few times. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. 
Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation so rich and free. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation so rich and free. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you for your son, Jesus, who came to give up his life, to take our sins to the cross, and to pour out his blood to cover our sin. Father, thank you for the very gift of salvation. And thank you for loving us enough to see that you would make a way that we could be eternally yours. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you again for joining me today, and I would ask that you would tune in again next Sunday. And as I spoke earlier, please stay tuned to the website during the week. Um, Monday, as I said, will be uh, Spencer Something to Think About, and Tuesday will be the Bible study. Wednesday will be my writing, Thursday will be Peter's picks, and possibly Mike's writing this Thursday or next Thursday, and Friday is Pastor Todd's message. So, please, do stay tuned in with us, because God has a lot for you to receive and to share in, and perhaps share it with others. So I trust that this week ahead you will have a good week. Be blessed so that you can be a blessing to others. Thank you. Until we talk to you again next week, have a great week.